Good afternoon and welcome to IVMF's VetNet webinars. My name is Elvis Abdij and uh, I'm Post Program Support Advisor for IVMF alumni and program graduates. I'm helping them with uh, resources and connections of starting or growing their business ventures or starting or growing their professional careers. Today with us we have Mirza Tihic, who will be going overview of how to write your business plan. Mirza is uh, Assistant Director for Office of Veterans and Military Affairs here at Syracuse University. He's a recent PhD graduate and a business owner and an adjunct professor at Syracuse University's Whitman School of Management. Now I will pass the mic to Mirza so he can give a little intro of himself and start the session. Mirza. Thanks, Elvis, and thanks to IVMF and everybody else for giving me the opportunity to be with you, be with you today. Uh, it's my pleasure today we're going to talk about writing a great business plan and really what it entails in the business plan. Uh, just quickly to add what Elvis said, I am adjunct professor of entrepreneurship and strategic management at the Whitman School of Management here at Syracuse University and I also teach the business plan lab. In the past, I worked with a lot of uh, IBMF entrepreneurship programs really focusing on, on how to write a business plan and strategic plans as well. Um, let's make this a conversation. Let's make this uh, pleasant conversations because sometimes it's dry material just talking about what the business plan entails. Uh, I have a presentation, so also at the end of the presentation I'm going to have my contact information. So anytime you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, that said, let me quickly share my screen with you guys and I'll start my presentation here. So today we're talking about writing a business plan and uh, Again, if you have any questions about the business plan itself, are confused about anything, please let me know. Uh, but really, the, the the agenda for today, oh, no, I say, it's really the structure of the business plan, um, value proposition. What is value proposition? And we want to talk about critical elements that you must address in that uh, in that business plan. Uh, you can ask questions. You can disagree with me if you think I'm. You have different opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion about it. Uh, and I might also push you a little bit to think about further and deeper about the need and what importance of the business plan, right? So the first thing is usually why business plan? Why should you write a business plan, right? A lot of people say I write a business plan so I can throw it away. Uh, could be, could be, right? But business plan, it's a, it's really the process of writing a business plan here is essential, right? Uh, it's the, the, the process of testing your ideas and strategies, see what works or doesn't work, think through problems to solutions, right? You identify problems and you then identify solutions to that. And when you do that and identify these solutions, then you, you create uh, you, you better prepared and you decrease the risk that you might be taking starting a business. So what is the, why, why the business plan? It is, as it says here, it's a roadmap to establish your goals, to make sure that you're on the track and heading in the right direction where you wanna take the business plan but where you feasibly can take the business plan based on your research. It is also action plan. It's small steps that lead to a larger result, right? You have to take certain steps to come to certain points. And also it's sales tool. It's a sales tool that you can use to attract investors. And investors could be angel investors. It could be family, friends, and fools. It could be to get a bank loan, right? You cannot get a bank loan. It doesn't matter if it's micro loan or if it's a significant loan. You need the business plan. If you're looking to get grants or anything like that, there's limited limited number of grants available. Even if you want to get, get a grant, there is they, they, they're looking for a business plan. And not just a business plan, they're looking for a great business plan, a quality business plan. And then it's uh, you also want to it's a tool, sale tool to vendors, right? You want to show and prove your vendors that you know you should supply me with your with 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 information that you have, or supply me with supplies that you have. It's a tool for customers. You're selling to customers. You know who the customers. It help you reach those customers, but also if you want to bring people, partners on board to work with you, right? How can you hire somebody if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a direction, if you can't tell them what your goals and objectives are and what do you want to achieve and what role do your partners or employees will play within that business that you're starting or already have existing, right? So a lot of times people don't write a business plan, mostly due to the lack of experience. A lot of times people also say, well, you know, my friend Susan never wrote a plan and she's made millions. You know, 
if you, if you talk to these folks who have made millions without business plan, if you ask them, what thing would you have made differently when you started your business? The, the answer usually is, I wish I've written a business plan. It would have saved me a lot of time and money, and a lot of headache, right? Again, because it's identifies a straight roadmap. It helps identify what those problems could be that, and then helps you address those problems down the line. It reduces the risks. And then also a lot of times situations in your business changes too quickly. So having knowledge of the environment helps you as well. Uh, so that's that's kind of the why the business plan, why you need the business plan. And it also says if you don't have a plan for ourselves, we will be part of someone else's plan, right? That's uh, John London said it once. Like if you don't have a plan for ourselves, we will we will be part of someone else's plan. So definitely, let's have a plan. So I assume some of you are in the in the in the in the. In the so here's the sorry. That's what the John London said. So usually how do we how we think about startup process right we think about we get inspired we develop plan identify goals and then we become successful right that's a lot of times how people perceive entrepreneurship but in reality in reality this is how the startup really looks like right and how do you write a business plan for this right and 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 there is a saying that no plan survives the first contact with the enemy it does not survive, but it helps you, you know, uh, helps you to deal with that contact and gets you, gives you resources and equips you with resources, you know, to be able to to better attack and, and defend yourself with that with that enemy. So, what do we know about the startup process? Right, you have to have we have to be creative. There's a lot of uncertainty and 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 it's ambiguity. It is a messy process. It's a lot of trial and error. Right, ready, fire, and I am. So in order to come to this inspiration all the way down to success, you need to have a plan and you have to consider all these steps in terms of what can go wrong, what can you do better. And by looking at all these uh, opportunities, more opportunities open up for you, right? Because you're going to go out there and talk to customers, to distributors, you're going to talk to suppliers. And by talking to them, you're going to get some amazing intelligence. And that intelligence is going to inform your business plan and will help you make informed decision. The key here is making informed decision, not gut feeling based decision, making informed decision as much as you can. So what does a good business plan look like? Right. A good business plan uh, is explains how you're going to do what you're planning to do. It provides evidence that the customers want to buy your business. Well, not your business, but your products and or services, and eventually maybe even your business, depending what your goal is. Uh, the business plan tells a story, it creates excitement, and addresses critical elements of the business plan, which we'll talk in a few, right? But business plan is not a substitute for action. It's the plan, it's the roadmap for the actions that you have to take. You have to also do ta take actions now to develop the business plan, and then business plan can help you make more informed decisions in terms of what actions to take next. Also, a business plan, a good business plan, is a living and breathing document. So you wanna, you wanna, um, you wanna keep updating the business plan, right? And also, it should be painful to write. If it's easy to write, then something went wrong, right? Because it's it takes time to write a business plan because it takes time and effort to talk, especially doing market research, to talk to potential customers, existing customers, customers that you might have lost in case your business, right? You wanna find out. What did go wrong? Why did I get the business? Why am I losing business? Or why did I lose the customer? I talk to suppliers, talk to industry experts. Uh, if you're a non-for-profit, right, you want to talk to the to the owners, you want to talk to foundations. That all will inform you uh, and inform the business plan. So painful in terms of it's not difficult, just time consuming. But all the time you're going to invest, it gives you also competitive advantage because you're getting intelligence that your competitors don't have. So objective of a business plan is to establish importance. Uh, like, I'm sorry, objective of today's presentation is to establish importance of the business plan, uh, convey to you what the audiences and types of business plans, plans are, and kind of outline the logic and structure of the business plan. I'll kind of go through some major components of the business plan that you should have and what goes into those components. There's plenty of, of business plan guides out there. I know that IBMF also has a business plan guide, nuts and bolts of the great business plan. So reach out to Elvis, he can share that with you. But you can also go to Small Business Development Center, or SCORE, all those Small Business Administration or, or SBA funded institutions do provide uh, simplified or great business plan guides which you can follow and then address. 
Uh, so let us turn now to describe the nature of the, of the, of the business plan. Uh, and, and you have to know the well-structured and well-researched business plan contributes to success of a business and the key issues and analysis identified in each section that we're going to talk now. So who is the audience of the business plan? First of all, it's you, right? It's, it's you as an entrepreneur. Uh, it's you because you're the one who needs this business plan the most. You're the one who's going to pursue this endeavor. You want to do this, uh, and you want to be. You want to success. You want to set yourself up for success. Uh, then financiers, as we talked previously, financiers want to know really is this business is this idea that you have with this business feasible, right? Is there pain out there? Is there need for for for, for the products and services you're offering to do? Is the market big enough, willing and able to buy? products and can you break even can you make profit and can you pay them back the money you want to borrow uh, suppliers and distributors also want to know how feasible is this is it even worth creating a relationship and working with you is it worth you know creating distribution channels for your products if if you don't if you don't know where you're going uh, similarly again the audience is prospective managers and employees but also regulators and other authorities so if you're getting let's say you're trying to get a uh, license to operate a restaurant you know, because and depending on where, where your location is, I helped a friend of mine open a restaurant and he had to show his business plan to the city, to the municipality, but he was also close to the highways. So he had to also show it to the Department of Transportation. Then he also had to show it to the Department of Health to show really what he's going to do, uh, show the plan, show the operations, show that, that has potential, show that he has money to do it and he can make it. Right. So again, quickly to summarize that each audience may have different needs. Therefore, different versions of plan need to be developed sometimes, but they all must be the, must be focused on the, on the same basics. They all have the same foundation. The entrepreneur needs to go through the process to better understand the concept and viability of your product. Then the financiers and suppliers and distributors need to be convinced of the viability. Therefore, it's very important to have a good marketing plan, market research and marketing plan. And for managers and employees, it is partly to attract them to join the venture and then it becomes a business guide for operating business especially in the early stages of your business uh, one plan will not satisfy satisfy all these diverse needs but they must be consistent with each other and and, and again depending what you but you as an entrepreneur have to do the the, the, the full-fledged business plan uh, so types of business plan right there's business plans that flesh out the concept and demonstrate the viability of the business as uh, business plans attract shareholders, stakeholders, and also the guided business, which is kind of reflected, and I just summarize this in, in, in the audiences. So we have to have at least three purposes or types of plans, right? To flesh out the concept, demonstrate the availability of the business, something you're doing for yourself, attract stakeholders, right? This is where you show that the concept is already proven, you show that the numbers work, and then also you show that you, you know the market, you know how big is the market, and then in the in the in the guide the business you show that this is how you operate this business this is what you have to do from the point where the customer comes in the first touch with the business they ever have experience with the, with the business to the point of becoming a repetitive customer uh, some related issues the uh, the entrepreneur must prepare the business plan right the business plan is another step in the entrepreneurship process that we have the entrepreneurship process is you start with the idea, you develop a concept, then you write a business plan. And that business plan is really identifying what resources you need. Uh, so, and, and therefore you must, you must as an entrepreneur write your business plan. By right? being the driver of this process allows you entrepreneur to think through an increasingly, at an increasing level of detail, right? You're gonna go so much in detail and the viability of the idea is gonna be more, uh, it's gonna be more clear to you. Uh, you will also make numerous changes for the better and as, as you ask and answer detailed questions of the business plan guide. Uh, uh, entrepreneur does not use the business software, right? I said here this, an entrepreneur should write his own business plan. Having someone write your business plan eliminates this critical learning and development process that you go through when you write your business plan. And similarly, using software will effectively prevent you from this process as well as the software sometimes help you develop answer questions or dig into the details for yourself. So really you want to be the one driving driving force, writing the business plan, researching everything about the business plan, getting all information about your industry uh, competitors, getting all information about what's going on in industry competitive space, 
getting all information related to who your potential customers are, talk to your market, potential customers, existing customers, past customers, talk to your competition, see what's going on, get that intelligence and then implement it in that plan. So are there any questions so far? Or? No, very good. Nothing good, okay. So length of the plan, length varies, right? But uh, stakeholders want no more than 25 to 35 pages, including appendix, right? So keep it short, keep it succinct, just identify what's the most important. Uh, many venture capitalists want a 15 page executive summary, right? So the, therefore business plan is also longer. Uh, the plan as operating guide for business plan will be also longer. And any analysis that you do should be in appendix, right? Any analysis, any research, your SWOT analysis, your market research, your survey results, put it in the appendix, but just give us the high level information in, in the business plan, right? So the process, the process of putting the, the business plan together is the key. The parts have to flow from one to another, uh, which kind of demonstrates understanding of the interconnectedness. And therefore, the internal consistency can be lost when parts are done by various people and then assembled, right? So the business plan should tell a compelling story about your business. As it says here, plans are nothing, but planning is everything. Uh, when, you, when, when, when you do the planning, you're gonna learn all the details. Uh, and, and by doing all these details, the, the plan will help you define specific uh, business objectives, goals, and enable you to get general parameters to guide the organizations based on those objectives and goals. The writing business plan should be should force logic and discipline into the business, and a good business plan should be also updated on a regular basis. But again, planning plans are nothing. Planning is everything. Right, just going through all this process, you gain so much uh, so much information, you gain so much knowledge that helps you then write a a, a uh, flawless kind of or, or consistent business plan and it has to flow from one to the other one and i'll show you in a few minutes the, the the kind of the the flow of the business plan what goes into the business plan but before that just quickly five key elements to think about that you have to have in your business plan right the first one is the mission this is really central to the activities you will do in forming the business but then also what you're going to do now once you start a business the business idea the idea will evolve into a venture that includes what you're selling customers to whom you are selling and why the customers will buy from you. Uh, and this is kind of the, the, the description of the products or services you're going to have. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Then your market. You have to understand why your market uh, thinks this is good uh, product or service and why it creates value for them. And then the organization. Really, this is really your stakeholders. Who is Who are your clients? Who are you? If you are a non-for-profit, who are your donors? Who's your management? Who's your staff? Again, if you're not for profit, do you have volunteers? Do you have a board? Do you have a board of advisors, board of directors? Do you have funders? Who are the funders? Right? So who are those? Identify them <clears throat> in your business plan. Relationships. Next one, right? This is uh, the relationships is really the way your business interacts with people, other businesses who are not stakeholders, but impact your business or your venture, such as vendors, suppliers, and other partners. And finally, the environment. What are the external forces outside of your control that influence the outcome, such as the economy, unemployment rate, interest rates, and so on. Right. So these things you have to be aware of, and these things have to be uh, really critical elements that, that have to be think about and part of your, of your business plan, which kind of leads us to the business plan. Uh, this is the outline used in the nuts and bolts of a great business plan that IVMF uses, but it breaks it down in a uh, total of 12 sections. Here we see uh, six sections, uh, executive summary, the company, the concept, product, services, industry analysis, right? This is your environment, market research, economics, and marketing plan. So the, co the company, concept, and products, really here you talk about what is the pain, what's the product or services you're going to sell. The industry analysis shows like who you're competing with, what is the environment you compete in, who are your competitors, and what other opportunities within the industry. Then your market research shows who are the people willing and able to buy your product, <clears throat> product or service that you identify in section two. Then the economics prove that uh, it's a viable economic model, meaning that you can break even, you can make profit based on the market that you identify and based on the products you have. And then the marketing plan shows how you're gonna reach the market you identify in section four. Then the next page, right, we have design development. Design development is more for companies that have products, 
especially once in technology, right? You want to identify here what you've done so far, how much do you still need to finish your product, where in the design process you are now, are you right to just the draft idea, are you prototyping it, are you better testing it, is it finished product and so on. The operations, the operations um, describe uh, what, how your business is going to work, right? How, how it's going to take you from, you know, taking the order from the customer all the way, what are the steps and the resources you need to deliver the product or service. Then the management team explains who's going to run those operations in the business. The overall schedule identifies like what are kind of major uh, critical timelines or tasks you have to achieve at certain points of time. Uh, critical risk problems, assumptions, anything that you think might be critical risk, a problem, potential problem, or any assumptions you made, you want to put it here. You want to let your reader know that that you made some assumptions if you made assumptions. Chances are you will have to sometimes make assumptions. Then the financial plan. The financial plan is basically your number numbers summarizing your business plan. Whatever you said you're going to do over the next three years, that should be also reflected in the, in the, in the, in the financial statements. And then the last one is proposed company offering. This is more for those who want to grow a business and maybe sell it or looking also to raise money from investors where you have to identify what's your net present value of your business, how much you're getting and how much you how much you want to raise, how much money you're looking to raise, from whom you're trying to raise it, and what is their rate of return, like what's if what, what's in for those investors. So let's start going to more details. Before I go into any details, again, are there any questions? No questions yet. Okay. So as you can see, as you see in, 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 the, in the outline I've given you, you want to, the, the executive summary is the first uh, section of the business plan. Even though it's the first section, it's the last section you want to write, right? This section should be written last, and this section provide an enthusiastic snapshot of your company explaining the who you are, what you do, and why you do it. Uh, it should be, if you can do it less than two pages in length, if not, two or three pages is acceptable. Uh, and after re reviewing the, the exact summary, you know, your reader want to learn more about your business and should have a basic understanding about your company. Uh, when you do this, exact summary is kind of the, the door to your business plan. If people get excited, they're going to continue reading or they might ask you more questions. So make sure that it's, it's, it's well written. Uh, show it to others. Uh, I have this thing called next door neighbor test. You give it to a neighbor who has no clue about the business you're in. And if he or she understands what are you talking about and has some exciting questions, you did a good job. If your neighbor has no clue what you're talking about and what you're trying to achieve, what your business is all about, what you do and why you do all those things, then you have to go back to the drawing board and, 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 and redo it. And, and maybe have a conversation with your neighbor. He or she can help you with that better. That said, right, a business plan, that's exactly the summary. So let's go into the details of the business plan. And this business plan deals with a pain, but also at the same time, business plan also deals with the relief. What's the relief of that business, of, of, of that pain? Which kind of comes to the first part of the second part of the exactly summary, but this is the first part you maybe want to start with, is what is the pain? You want to identify in your company concept products services section, what is the pain? meaning what is the pain that customers are experiencing? What is the next best alternative that's being offered right now? And what, what are the painful experiences of the next best alternative? And what is the pain relief that you're recommending, that you're proposing to do with your business plan? Uh, what is your value proposition? And value proposition basically is the benefit that the customer gets from the product or service you're doing. So your value proposition is usually that pain relief that you're offering. Uh, in this section, also, you want to identify the mission statement, the purpose of your business. Uh, and mission statement usually addresses what do you want to do now, what you're doing now. Then you want to have a company vision statement about your company growth. And uh, co company growth or the vision statement outlines what the company wants to be in the future. Then you want to, in this section, identify your business goals and objectives. These should be measurable goals and objectives. Don't just say, I want to start a business to sell popcorn. Right. I want to start an online business and you know have revenue of one million by year three. Uh, online popcorn business, right? Popcorn goods. I want to sell and have revenue of one million in, in year three. Right. That's a measurable 
uh, objective. And if it is, is realistic, I don't know, you have to do your research to see if it's re re uh, realistic. Uh, but you also want to identify how you can evaluate that, uh, measure it, it's time bound, and it's also, it could be sustainable, is it or not? I usually use the SMART, uh, S-M-R-T, for, for, for defining goals and objectives. Uh, then you also want to talk about you, you, how you came up with this business, right? Give us brief history of the business, who you came, how you how you came up with the idea, and then who your competitors are. So after reviewing and after reading this section, your reader should know what the business is and what it stands for. The reader should have a perception of the company's growth and potential. They should know what your specific goals and objectives are of your business. And they should also have a good background information about the company, right? And at the same time, they should know um, the, who your competitors are. And looking at your competitors, they should also know how you're different from your competitors. Therefore, it's very important to describe specifically what your products and services are, right? Going to the features and, pro and benefits of your product. Um, and, and when I talk about features and benefits, right, I usually use the the Teflon frying pan, right? The Teflon frying pan, you know, it's it's heavy, it's it's made from metal, metal. it has this frying pan thing, and it has also the the, the handle, right? It, it might be black color, it might be different colors, all those are features, but then the benefit, it's it's non-stick. So you want to identify what are the features and, and benefits of your product in, in, this, in this section as well. Uh, oftentimes, it's also good to have a matrix that summarizes uh, that summarizes what products and services will you offer. And also you want to explain how your products and services are competitive, why they're better than your competitors. Hence, when I talk about here, right, who your competitors are. And here's the thing, your competitor, a lot of times people confuse who the competitors are. Competitor is not only the person or the company selling the same product, offering same service you are. Your competitor is the one who addresses the same pain that you are doing. So. It's, it's the same maybe product or service that you're offering, but also the next best alternative. So don't just think that if I'm selling coffee, coffee is, every coffee shop is my competitor, right? Grocery stores are my competitors because they're also addressing the pain of providing good quality coffee to coffee connoisseurs, right? Or it could be also a gas station. They also sell coffee. Now we have fast food restaurants selling also coffee, right? McDonald's was not in coffee business 10 years ago. Now they have Mac coffee. So your competitor is the business who solves the same problem or, or has the solution or has a pain relief for the pain that the customer is experiencing, right? Or, or who creates the same value. But again, it's the one who addresses the same, same pain that you're addressing. That's your competitor. And if you have a picture or brochure of your products or service or, or, or sorry of your product, you know, make sure you put it in the appendix and refer refer that, put the reference, say, hey, you know, for, for better description and all features and benefits of the product, see appendix A, B, C, whatever you're gonna do. So after reviewing the section again to add in addition to understanding what your business is about, what your growth and potential is, what your goals and objectives are, as well as the background, how you came up with here. The customer should know why in the business, what your services are and what the cost of those businesses are and how and why your products or services are competitive. Competitive. Then we come to the market, right? So you have now a product, you have a service that you're offering, you're solving a pain. Now you need to prove us that there is market, that there are people or companies willing and able to buy your product. That there's people willing and able to buy your product because their pain is so big and you don't want best out there solving that pain or addressing that pain. So define the critical needs of your perceived existing market. Identify your market. Who's your target market? Don't tell me everybody's your market. Be specific. Who's your target market? Right? If I'm a wholesaler of, of, of coffee beans, the coffee drinkers are not my market. Right? It's the grocery stores are my market. Star, Starbucks is my potentially my market. Right? So it could be those, again, depending where you are in the value chain, you have to be clear where you are in the value chain and who are you creating value for, and who specifically that, and who is that specifically. Therefore, market research really is a critical factor. And, 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 and this is really, no matter how cool your idea is, if you don't know your market, your business plan is going to be weak. So I usually love to call the market research and the market section the foundation of your business plan, because everything depends on the market. Your price is going to depend how much willing the customers are, uh, how much the customers are willing to pay for it. 
your promotion is going to depend on on who the customers are because you want to create your promotions to attract your customers right your product is going to depend on your customers because you want to create product that's going to be uh that, that solves a problem for the customers and they're willing and able to use it and also you want your, your placement the way you're going to distribute your product where you're going to sell the product and how you're going to sell it also depends on the customer so you really the customer is your foundation of the business plan and at this point no matter how emotionally you tie are you tied to your to your idea and your product if the customer says it's not a good product listen to the customer get the input find out why they don't like the product ask them what can you do better and tweak it according to the needs of your customers because ultimately you're not in business if you don't have customers uh, actually you're not in business if you don't have any transactions right if you don't sell your products so it's very important that you talk and understand your customers understand their behavior why they buy where they buy those products how do they buy those products who influences the decision making in terms of buying the product who else is involved in that product or process of buying it how often do they buy it right all those things so it's really important that you, you provide a general profile of your, of your targeted clients to let us know really who they are where they are why they buy and everything else and also once you do your market analysis and research research analysis sorry you'll be able to understand really how much market is is is, is being addressed by competitors and potentially will let you know how much market share can you capture uh, based on on your market research so again critical factor is market research right uh, so again explain here what are you selling and if you're enough for profit a lot of times people say well i'm a non-for-profit i'm not selling anything yes you are selling something even if you're offering free services to somebody you have to sell that service uh, value to somebody else to raise the money right you have donors foundations people that contribute people that volunteer right so you have to still sell somebody something so if either, either it's selling uh, your mission and, and the plan to your volunteers to come and help you feed the homeless or is it pitching to the non -for -profit, to the foundations or donors or community members or church members to raise money so you can feed the homeless either or you are still selling something right so you have to be you have to know who your customers are you have to know who your target market is and you also have to know what is a competitive advantage that that is going to attract those customers uh, same thing you also want to know why you're better than others who might be serving similar or same needs so market research in 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 in, in all all the different types of business plans you talked about market research and the market definitely must be in, in each one of them then next one is really the economics of the of the, of the economic model of your business plan here you really want to once you, you know you have your product you know what your product is you kind of have an idea what your costs are going to be what it takes you to make the product and deliver the product so you have to know what are your fixed and your variable costs. Fixed costs are the expenses that do not, do not change as a function of the activity of a business within the relevant period. So for example, you must pay rent and utility bills, bills irrespective of fundraising efforts or sales. And I'm putting here fundraising efforts, again, non for profits, just as profits are impacted by the same. So <clears throat> doesn't matter if you have sales or not, you have to pay fixed costs, right? You have to pay the lease, you have to pay utilities, you have to pay a phone. It doesn't matter if you have sales, it doesn't matter if you're raising money or anything like that. Versus variable costs. Variable costs are expenses incurred per unit sold. So if I'm selling t-shirts, uh, the cost of the t-shirt, if I'm selling a t-shirt for $10 and, and, and I, bought, I bought a t-shirt for $5, sorry, for $3, let's say I bought a t-shirt for $3 and selling for $10, then the three dollars is my variable cost because that's how much the t-shirt costs me and that cost is only incurred when i sell it because i don't have to pay the t-shirt if i'm not selling a call as a turn on t-shirts i have 30 days and the cost is gone right so it's very important to understand that uh, it's also very important that you understand these two expenses as they're critical in helping you understand when you're going to break even and break even means that you covered all your expenses fixed and variable costs and now moving after the break-even point, that's when you start making profit. Um, and here is the break-even uh, uh, formula, how to calculate. So as you can see, fixed costs, you identify what your fixed costs are. I recommend you do it by monthly basis for your, for your startup business. So you understand really what it takes you, but also you can do it on monthly. Then 
it fixed cost is the, the divided by selling price minus the variable cost per unit. Remember, so let's say my my, my fixed cost for my t-shirt business is thousand dollars, and I'm selling my selling t-shirts for ten dollars, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm paying three dollars per each t-shirt. So selling price minus minus variable cost per unit. This is also called contribution margin or margin. My margin is seven dollars. So I divide thousand by seven. And that would be that would tell me how many uh, t-shirts I have to sell in one month to break even, which comes out to be uh, about 143 t-shirts I have to sell in order to make profit. Uh, also interesting to know that after you break even, you're not gonna make ten dollars. You're gonna make seven dollars because you, you still have the variable costs. So the seven dollars, the margin is something that goes to your, toward the bottom line because the variable cost is still being cured every time you sell the unit. Versus your cost is fixed cost is just incurred once per month. So if you want to address the fixed cost in in, in middle of the of the month, the fixed cost does not come back. But then every unit you sell afterwards, you still have to pay the three dollars in this case for the t-shirt, the variable costs. So after reviewing the section, uh, the economics and the economic model depends. Some people call it economics. Some people call it economic model. Uh, it's not really important how you're going to title it. It's very the, the, the most important thing is the is the uh, is the content within the section, right? And after they read this, they should be able to understand what your products are and the costs of your products, and what are the costs associated with the business plan and your business, as well as when will you break even? That you have a good understanding in terms of how many shirts or whatever products or services selling. How many transactions do you have to have each month or year to break even for this? So we talked about the product. We talked about the pain, right, that you're going to address with the product. We talked about the pain that's being experienced by your markets. We talked about market. We talked about economic, the economic model. We showed that you, know, you can make this uh, financially feasible. Now the next step is you want to show how you're going to reach your customers, how you're going to reach that market you identify in your market research section. Right, so you want to again identify who's your target market and explain what marketing tools will you use to reach and sell to your mark target market or target markets. Sometimes you might have two. Uh, you also want to identify and describe your, your channel of distributions, right? How you're gonna get to them and explain your sales strategy specific to the four P's: pricing, promotion, products, and place. Uh, I have it I put down here as you can see. The uh, you know attention or awareness, interest, desire, and action. This is usually a buying or selling process that each person goes when they buy something, either product or service. Even the company goes through the same process. So you want to know what, how can you create awareness or interest uh, within your potential market? How can you create awareness of, about your products or services where people have never heard about you? What tools will you use? What promotions actually will you use to do it here? Then interest right where can i find you what are the where can i find your product where is it going to be placed uh how are you going to make me uh, how, how can i get educated about this right that also includes pricing then the desire right what is going to make me desire buy sometimes might be promotion sometimes might be you know sales or something like that and then action right what's going to take me what marketing tool is going to take me there that i, I say okay here's here's 10 bucks for the t-shirt and what's missing here on, on this illustration is also relationship. Uh, depending on your business, but today most, especially in the service industry, most businesses want to build a relationship. There is a saying that it costs you less to maintain a customer than to acquire a new one. Because if you have to go through, sorry. If you have to go through all these four steps, each one of them requires some marketing tools mix of marketing tools it costs money and time versus the relationship is just one step make keeping engaged with the customer so a lot of times like let's say if you go to best buy and other places they try to to get you to buy to use the credit card and once you apply for the credit card now they have all the information and they send you in mail promotions right all those things are of creating and maintaining a relationship and giving you discounts and so on so again this section should show clearly that you understand how you based on your uh, based on the market research that you understand also what tools you need to implement what what sales strategy you have to implement to reach your customers and engage them make them purchase a product or service from you and keep them purchasing from you 
Here's a yeah. question from online. Okay. So we have uh, Tracy asking, uh, what are some of the resources for helping identify status on our target market or market data? For example, if you are opening a preschool and your target clients is three to six years old, would census data showing the number of those children in the geographical area be adequate? Yes, you can use census data because you're looking at family uh, household size and the age of the family. So chances are you can see just uh, you can make some assumptions, right? Uh, how what's the average age of a three-year-old, of, of a parent of a three-year-old or six-year-old, and then you can uh, you can uh, you can then make those assumptions, kind of estimate. What I would recommend is reaching out to your local uh, small business development centers they have a central library so you can submit a request saying hey i'm looking to do research in a certain market can you give me a, a, a analysis of that market or specific industry so reach out to small business development centers but also reach out to your local libraries uh, and if you have a university or college close by go to their library as well uh, most universities have a business librarian and uh, as a guest, like I know here at Syracuse University, you can go to a library and be a guest, um, and they can, and you have access. You cannot take any information out, but you have to log in as a guest in, the, in the, on their computers, and you can actually go and access a lot of the databases, and you can ask the business librarian to walk you through and help you identify the data you're looking for. But definitely, uh, census is a good starting point, and you have to sometimes you have to be creative in terms of how you measure that. I hope that answered the question. Well, let me know if there's more questions, please. Uh, thank you, Mirza. There's also Carol. She's asking, is there any open source for market research on industry trends and competitors? Can you repeat the question? Is there an open source for market research on industry trends and competitors? Competitors? Uh, there are, like you can look at uh, Yahoo Finance and other places. Um, but I would advise, again, your local library as well as university libraries and small business development center. Those are all free and most most time public, uh, publicly available uh, resources. Uh, in terms of competitors, the best way is to directly uh, research your competitors, right? And I, I, I work at Syracuse University here and I usually say, look, if I want to open a co coffee shop, there's four coffee shops almost uh, on one street here. I would go spend the whole day in each one of them, right? You do you go do observations, you see what they do, how many employees are there, uh, who are the employees, uh, how big the lines are, at what time are the lines biggest, when is when's nothing going on, how does how does the menu look like, uh, where do they store the coffee, where do they store all the the, the baked goods, do they make the baked goods in the house, or are, are they unpacking and heating them up? Right? What's the seating looking like? Uh, do they have free internet? All those things. So the more you, you look and observe what's going on, the more intelligence you can collect uh, and can make them inform decisions in terms of how you can be better than your competitors. And again, it depends what a co competitor is. Sometimes it's very difficult to reach out and find out. But I would also recommend that you reach out to your competitors. It might sound insane and crazy, but I would recommend reaching out to your competitor, have coffee, have a conversation, tell the competitor what you're trying to do. Uh, and ask the competitor to give you some advice. You'll be surprised how much advice your competitor is going to help you. I, I had one, we had one student veteran here who was looking to open a uh, property management company somewhere in Michigan and in a small town. And there was only one competitor in the town. He went to the competitor, explained what he was doing, told his, him told him his story. He was a Marine, uh, had a dis uh, serious connected disability, had passion for real estate, the competitor at the end of the conversation offered him and actually hired his wife to work six months in his business to learn the trade. And the competitor said it made him better as well. It made him more competitive. It made him improve his operations as well. So don't don't uh, don't create any uh, assumptions. Don't be assumptions, presumptuous. Um, don't speculate. Go in and talk to people. If, you know, I have done the same things. I've had some people kick me out of the store. Some people sat me down and gave me coffee and told me everything they're doing. And the same thing is when people come to me and ask me about my real estate business, I sit down and tell them everything. And, and I'd rather have them know all the all my experiences and they can make informed decision 
then usually not tell them or give them you know bits of pieces and then you go out there and you know lose a lot of money and i'm the one responsible for that as well so it depends who you talk to but i think the more two people you talk and you should not talk only one competitor try to talk to as many people as you can and i advise the same team when people come to me and says look this is my experience this is what i, I have done this is what works for me this is what didn't work for me please go talk to other people maybe somebody has figured different things that work better for them and might be better fit for you because they all have different passions and needs and, and 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 objectives and goals in their lives and sometimes what i'm doing might not well, oftentimes what i do is not going to be same as what you're doing but it's good to know what i do so maybe some of the things i'm doing might help help you or improve your business or impact your business so i hope that answered that was kind of long answer to the question but any other questions uh no thank you all right so now we talked about the product that's going to solve the problem for your market that has the problem right you know the market you prove that you can economically make this business sustainable and make profit you showed us here in, in your marketing strategies that you know how to reach your customers now you want to show and explain to us how you're going to make this all happen right so here you want to provide a description of how your company is going to get organized and provide an organizational chart right who is going to be in charge what are the responsibility of that person who works with that with that person for that person what are the responsibilities that they're going to be that the tasks and duties right you also want to provide a description of how your company is operating meaning what is your operational chart how do you go from an order to delivery of your products or services and i'll show you on my next slide what that what that kind of can look like uh, also, you want to describe the legal structure of your business, right? Well, how is it going to be structured? Who's going to own it? What's the ownership of it? Uh, also, identify any necessary or specific or special licenses and or permits your business needs to or already has to operate, like health license if you're starting a restaurant, if you're going to be a, a street vendor, you have to have a license or permit from the city and so on. And also provide a brief description of key managers within the company, right? Talk about who are those key managers, what makes them so great and good fit for the industry based on the experiences and the knowledge that they have, right? But I think very in, in, in overall, this section is also very important for you as an entrepreneur to identify what is your operating process going to be, right? So here's just an example, and, and, and it's, it's an example that you can use for yourself, but right here is an example of truck arriving to a loading dock, right, to, to a warehouse. So then it has to count. The first step is that truck right you need to have a truck you need to have a driver then the truck driver has to have a phone to contact the control then in once they contact the control they get a dock and order number assigned they have to wait you have to then file how long as usually wait they get a door assigned then they go and do the truck entrance entrance and then the truck is being unloaded so when the truck is being unloaded who unloads the truck where is it going what equipment do you use to unload the truck right all these processes that you're developing here you have to ask your questions how am i going to do this who's responsible for this what resource do i need am i using some technology that can make me that they can make this work better and more efficient and effective what is the technology what are those technologies out there is there an app is the software that i need do i need training on this what is the skill needed for an employee to make this and make this happen right so the next step is then you are loading truck what do you have to do is you have to inspect the truck the 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 the, the, the goods right is, is this goods type necessary in, in, in the stock, right? If it's yes, it goes inbound goods checking. If it's not, you have to wait, has to wait for checking, right? Where does it wait? Who is responsible for waiting? Who's responsible actually checking if it's necessary? Then if it goes inbound and goes checking, who does it? It goes to checking again, who does it? How are you being, how it's being done? Rejected goods loaded, right? It goes to truck and then it's being departed or it, uh, if everything is fine, then the empty truck departs. Who communicates to empty truck to the port, right? So this is just example of how a small piece of a business process looks like. And you wanna do the same thing for yourself. Let's say you have a coffee shop, right? The first stop should be the customer comes to a counter countertop, to the customer makes an order. Who asks the customer what they, wanna, uh, what they wanna order, right? What is the order processing system they're using? Uh, what are they purchasing? Uh, where, where's the menu and so on? So you wanna identify all these things, each step in, in your process your operating process that will help you understand what resources you need so when we talk about resources it's not only financial resources but also equipment assets right assets could be equipment could be real estate uh it could be uh 
technology, and all those things. And then also your, 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 your human resources, right? Your personnel. Who are the people that you need? What are their skills? What what are the what training do you have to offer them so they can work and perform the job and so on? How do you, who does the quality assurance or quality management and so on? So it's very important and essential for you as an entrepreneur to lay this down step by step to identify what could be potential bottlenecks and what can you do to address those bottlenecks, right? What resources will you need? And oftentimes it might be technology, it might be expert in the field, it might be maybe collaborating with a partner and so on. Or maybe sometimes you want to outsource, outsource certain, certain things as well. So that's kind of the the, the uh, uh, what what the organization management looks like. Um, again, key is having general flow operations within the firm and resources needed to make it run seamlessly. And then once you know how you're going to run your organization and how you're gonna who's gonna manage the organization now you want to show your financials in the financial management and and again this the the financials usually provide a good summary of what everything you talked about in in the business just now in numbers so if you have a new business your financials should have estimated estimate of startup costs startup costs we talked about the fixed and variable costs Fixed and variable costs are usually costs associated with operating business, operating business, versus the startup costs are all the costs you have to incur to make your business operational. So until you start selling your products, all the costs you kind of incurring are your startup costs, right? If I'm starting an app business and it takes me six months to develop the app, I launch it, start selling it, all that cost within the six months it took me to develop the app is startup costs, just an example. Right. So for new business, you want to identify what is your estimated startup cost, but then also you want to identify for at least one year, project a balance sheet, project an income statement, and project the cash flow statements. Uh, and the cash flow statement, you want to do it on, on, on a monthly basis. This is at least one year. Uh, I ask my students usually to do for five years, but I've seen a lot of a lot of like small startups doing it for three, between three and five years is more realistic because you want to think more long term what other opportunities and what is potential of your business plan of your business as you as you want to grow the business right so after reviewing your 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 financial financial sections the reader should have good understanding of your financial capacity and or projections for your company moving forward if you have an existing business here you want to provide depending if, if it's longer if you have business for more than three years at least last three years balance sheets income statements and the cash flow the last 12 months and just like with the with the other business right you still want to see how you're predicting the future how you're estimating your future based again on your market research based on your business plan based on the operations you're going to have in place now or the, whatever you're planning to change with your business plan so that's kind of and, and those are the these sections that i just covered these are the, the essential sections you should have in your business plan right so you should have your company concept Talk about what what your company is about, what products or services you're selling. Let us know what your what your who your competitors are. Let us know who your market is. Tell us the potential of the market. Show us that it's, it's economically feasible. Show us that you know how to reach your market and get them to buy your products and or services. Then you want to show that you have seamless operations to deliver that value or address that pain. That you have people in place that are capable. Uh, and ready and willing to do it and, and make sure that it, it gets implemented and you can create the value and finally, finally you also want to summarize this and show that this is financially this is a financially viable and feasible business and, and there is profit that can be made long term as well so that's that's kind of in a nutshell what are the, the major components of the business plan and, and really every business plan should have these components that I kind of went a little bit into depth today uh, Quickly, some common mistakes that I've seen in the business plan. Really, you have to define the market, estimate the size and potential, demand gaps of the market. You have to know your buyer demographics, customer buying process. You want to identify who are decision makers. You want to segment your market and what are the factors uh, affecting the market. So if you don't have these things, this makes a weak market section. Uh, and I said, Market research, understanding who your market is, is the foundation of your business plan. If this is weak, everything else will be weak. Uh, another common mistakes I also see, even if the market section is good, it might be that you have a weak financial section. 
especially cash flow, missing items. Uh, you, sometimes people make unclear assumptions. assumptions. Uh, there's sometimes also lack of specifics and sometimes also lack of realism, you know, too ambitious. Even though your market research shows one thing, you're being over, overly optimistic on, on the other end. Uh, also, sometimes people uh, forget uh, or create a weak deal section, and that's more if you have an ask section, section proposal section. Uh, also, people underestimate the downside. What's the downside if things don't go well to your plant? Uh, another one is that I see is big operations. People don't know how to, they know the market. They seem to have good grasp on financials, but they don't know how they're going to deliver the value. Uh, and then lack of internal consistency. I talk about what makes great business plan is, is that has is internally consistent. And also why you want to have kind of vision in the business plan. You want to talk about future potential. So if you don't mention future potential, what, what you can do, a way it can take your business, it sometimes makes a, a, a poor business plan. Some other business plans since, um, you know, if it's poorly prepared, this is far too slick. If it's far, it's, if, it's, if it's poorly prepared, investors are going to think it's amateur, right? And then if it's if it's too slick, investors wonder what is being hidden by the flash. Uh, and if, if the summary is too long, not to the point, if it can be described succinctly, it may be a waste of time and money. Uh, uh, it, it is, is the product real or just a pipe dream, right? Uh, if it's not clear in terms of where, where you're standing with development, uh, why anyone buy, it's unclear. Do not assume your idea is so great that it will sell itself. Investors won't think so. Uh, management team qualifications are unclear, right? Investors conclude team does not have relevant experiences, therefore it, it's it's no-go. And then also, lastly, the financials and exercise in visual, this is exercise of in, in visual thinking, indication of lack of understanding of running a company. Right, anyone may not be a deadly sin, but any like any anyone may not be deadly sin, but severely will certain it certainly will be. So make sure that you address e even these things here as well. So that's my presentations for today. I think I, I had I taken longer than I planned and last time for discussion. But it, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take any questions. Here's also my contact information, so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or reach out. This is my cell phone number as well as my email here. Again, thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some of the my experiences and some of the knowledge I have about business plans. Thank you, Mirza. We have just one quick question. It says, regarding your coffee shop examples, how do you demonstrate need for a coffee shop? How do you demonstrate need for a coffee shop? Uh, you can do it quickly by doing a... Uh, a, a survey, you know, you can just survey some folks on the streets or the, or the neighborhood to really see are they happy with, with it could be just uh, simple questions, you know, are you happy with current, how, how strongly do you agree or disagree with following sections? Uh, the current coffee shops provide great quality. The, our city has plenty of, of coffee shops. There is a need for new or unique coffee shop. Um, you know, I always use example that if, if when I look at all these coffee shops we have here, I would do the same thing they do, and I would offer Turkish coffee and, and use that as my differentiating point, right? Because that's a lot of businesses, grocery stores, right? They they sell the same items, and sometimes they have like ten items that they kind of unique or different. And I would still do the same thing. So you can, like in this example, you can ask, you know, how likely do you think there is a, or you can say there is a need for coffee shop that offers Turkish coffee, right? And they can again say agree or disagree, and that that will give indication in terms of how happy are they with current offering, and what they think in terms of is 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 there need for other coffee type or other coffee shops in the community. Thank you, Mirza. And I just want to remind everybody out there that our next web that webinar is on March 28th and is going to be on uh, uh, Companies and Incorporations, Inc. Uh, Corpco will talk about how to incorporate your business and services they offer for our IBMF program graduates. And also, we just remind, like to remind you that we will be sending out a um, short survey link with the recorded webinar. Where for everyone that registered and we please ask you to provide your feedback on how did this webinar go and uh, what you would like to see in the future thank you mirza again and thank you all very much and i'll see you next time bye bye thank you bye